The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Now, what do you do when you have something against someone? Mark chapter 11, verse 24 and 25. Mark 11, 24 and 25. Mark 11, 24 and 25. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So we are talking about someone in the presence of God. Verse 25 says this. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Now, what happens is this. So, if someone has something against you, and you know that it is true, and your conscience arrests you through the power of the Holy Spirit, now, leave the offering first go and reconcile and then come and take the offering but at the altar and so, so who do for him, when him. you have you remember that you have something against someone now, can I say, who, who be be a, be a? bible is simple Just say, no, forgive forgive, forgive. forgive. No. because you don't have to go and make any reconciliation you have something against someone so at that moment forgive because if you don't forgive your heavenly father will not forgive you and it will make your prayer of none effect are we together Fine. But this evening, I will discuss the fact that obedience to God's command is more important than sacrifice. Mm. Still dwelling on Matthew 5. 23, 24. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and then remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and reconcile them. Cons go and be reconciled to them. Then come and offer your gift. Obedience to God's command is more important than sacrifice or any offering. Now, I will dwell in 1 Kings 15. We will look at Saul and the Amalekites. Now, 1 Samuel 15, 1 to 22, but we'll take the reading in parts. First Samuel 15. Let's start from verse 1. Samuel said to Saul, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you, you king over his people Israel. So listen now to the message from the Lord. Samuel said, Saul said, I am the one the Lord sent to anoint you, you king over his people Israel. 
Now, so between Samuel and Saul, if we are talking about the Lord. When we talk about the Lord, we are talking about the owner and creator of all things. The one in whom we live, move, and have our being. Now, when we accepted Jesus, we accepted him as Lord and Savior. Don't let us forget that we accepted him as our Lord and savior normally when we conf we confess our sins the preacher man will say that having said this you are born again you are saved but we don't tend to add the fact that you have come under the lordship of christ so samuel is saying that the lord commanded you now the lord commanded a lord because saul could also be referred to as lord because he was the king of israel and the surveyor and if you like the owner of the land of Israel. That is why when we are referring to the Almighty, we say He is the Lord of Lords. Because many of you sitting here are lords. If you own a land, you are a landlord. So we are dealing with the one who is a creator and the owner of all things. Hannah says there is none holy as the Lord. Now there is no rock like the one I'm talking about. Now Hannah says he sends people to the grave and he brings some out of the grave. Now he says that he makes some poor and makes some rich. He obeys some and then he lifts some up. Now, this is the one that I'm talking about. I want us to have the consciousness that by being born again, we come under the lordship of Christ. Now, verse 2 says this. This is what the Lord Almighty says. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came out from Egypt. Now go. Let's, let's listen to the instructions from the Lord. Now go. Attack the Amalekites. And totally destroy all that belongs to them. Totally. Destroy all. Totally. Destroy all that belongs to them. Mm. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infant, cattle and sheep, camel and donkeys. Now we will jump to verse 7 to see how Saul executed the command. Now verse 7. It was so. Then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Havila to Shaw, near the eastern border of Egypt. Now verse 8. He took Aga, king of the Amalekites, alive, and all his people and all his people he totally destroyed with the sword. Now, Agag and Imuno, 
na omanu nyina ade o de nkrante ano sai won pasa 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 but Saul and the army spared Agag and the best of the sheep the best of the sheep eh? mm -hmm. and the cattle and the fat calf and the lambs everything that was good they spared these they were unwilling they were unwilling listen to that to destroy completely yes. but everything that was despised and weak they totally destroyed and solo ne edom no unu agak ne enwan ne anantwi a waye ne won a wadore srade ne enwamruwa ne de aye no nyina aye won mobo na wan pese wose won na de biara wo muo na enye mahwe no de wose no pasa 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 you see when i read but so spared agag i don't i don't feel his heart but when i come to uh, the second line these they were unwilling to destroy they were unwilling to destroy it means that the instruction was clear in their minds they understood it but they were unwilling to destroy no. Let's listen to his justification. Verse 15. Saul answered when he was confronted by Samuel. The soldiers brought them from the Amalekites. They spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to the Lord your God. Now Saul will say, "We'll be saying on a similar kind of say, 'I'm a leg for you.' Now what did everybody if we say, 'Oh man, not to do a man any an inquiry.' A year no one say what did be bought for the I'm a ready we need to pay. But we totally destroyed the rest. Now so the kind of the you are saying now, pass a pass a pass a pass. The soldiers brought them. They spared the best of the sheep and cattle to sacrifice to Samuel your God." What are we, done? we are coming to sacrifice to your God. So when did God cease to become his God? Now you can see a backslider. Samuel said, You have become big in your eyes. So now the Lord speaks, and you, 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 you are unwilling to obey the instructions. Have come to sacrifice, we have brought them to sacrifice to your God. In this life, none of us should use any language as it doesn't matter. You see, things matter. And when the Lord speaks, it matters. Verse 22. Now, this is the big one. Let's listen to somewhere. For some see, sometimes people tend to compare what Saul did to what David did. And because David slept with someone's wife, they think that that is a bigger sin. But it doesn't, it doesn't come anywhere near somebody who is proud and arrogant. Every sin is sin. But when God instructs and the human being is not willing, it is dangerous. But Samuel replied, verse 22, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings? And sacrifice as much as in obeying the Lord. Some work can say, Eradipe or share a for the ne okum a for the sinitia, ubetia eradino ana. To obey 
is better than sacrifice okay. and to heed is better than facts of rams after all, what does God need? What interest does he have in rams and sheep? You see, not the creator and the owner of all things. He wants Saul's heart and Saul's total obedience. Brothers and sisters. When we get to the altar, what is important is to obey rather than the sacrifices and the offerings. One day Jesus was teaching. And then this cry was standing somewhere. Listening to the debate. And he decided to throw in a question. Then Jesus answered and the man concluded. The man actually summed up what Jesus said and Jesus was happy. And Mark chapter 12. Verse 22. Verse 22. Verse 28, I should say. Mark 12, 28. Now, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him. Of all the commands, which is the most important. Now, therefore, no more back. What is it? What is it? Now, who knows? Say, what what we need? No, Eba Bibi say no. Say, Mra Sema Edi Inyina Mukane No. Ewa He. The most important one answered Jesus is this: Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. I used to go and say once, no say. Now he doesn't end. He says, Love the Lord your God before your heart and before your soul and before your mind and before your strength. So the Lord is one and he must be loved with all that we have. It's the greatest command. Now 31 says that the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these two. Now, if you are some say, you toss me in on ye, do yonko, so on, and ransom beer and you are a chin ye no. Now, so let's listen to uh, what the man actually said. Let me in tea near down for no a kind of etch. Verse 32. Well said, teacher. The man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but Him. No, Trefo no say no say. We, a Trefo, what can you say? When you uncoup on your barco, now be a new one. Otisa or no cry. Are we all together? We did it say So, verse 33. To love Him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Now, so we better don't know if you are coming in Nemo, in Tiasian in Nemo, no one would in Nemo. Now, we better do your uncle, a sour honor, a sinner, or share up for the air, and you move up for the air. This is the man, what he deduced from what Jesus said. And now, Let's listen to what Jesus will say. But let, let me, me just repeat what the man said. Probably you didn't get it well. Now, to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When we say to love him, John says that 
When we say love God, it means obey God. That is what John teaches. So this man is saying to love him, and then someone say to obey is to obey this God is better than sacrifice. And this man is saying that loving God. And loving your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifice. Samuel or Kazano or City, a yachin for the Bunina, and Adam Fusu Tresse, O Do Euradi, Unam no one would in Nemuno, now do your uncle say, Oh, no, a sinny affordia, and you want for the beer. Now let's listen to Jesus, verse 34. Umientia, yes, with your son. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, that is the man. He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. Now you are not far. <laughs> you are very, very close to the kingdom of God. Now he, 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 now he, he registers his excitement. About the man's understanding of scripture. And that the scribe has been able to grasp what he was teaching. Then he says, You are not far from the kingdom. This evening, how many of you want to be so close to the kingdom of God? Then remember that to obey is better than to sacrifice. That you love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than burnt offerings and sacrifice. Deuteronomy 28 says, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands, I give you today, the Lord your God will set you up high above all the nations on earth. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands, that's all. He will do the lifting this is Christianity he will do the lifting the difference between one Christian and the other is the ability to obey God nowadays in churches we tend to bless God and bless the people yes it is good that we bless them but you see if they fully obey the Lord their God that is all the Lord will bless them. We go to church, we anoint everyone. But we don't teach them to fully obey God. You see, when John was praying for the church and his, his friend Gaius, he says that I wish above all things that you will prosper and be in health. Even as your soul prospers, I wish. Because he does not bless. The one who blesses, when you obey him, God will bless you. John says, I wish. He doesn't have the power. Even to lift up, to heal, and to give good health. He says, I wish, I wish. But you see, the Lord, our God, he has the ability to bless. So let us fear him and obey him. God told Moses to tell Aaron to tell the people that the Lord bless you. He didn't say, I bless you. The Lord, the source of the blessing is the Lord. Now, 
Now, when you fully obey the Lord, all these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord. There are some blessings lurking somewhere. They will come to you and they will accompany you. <laughs> How many of you want to work with blessings? Yeah. They will accompany you. David says, goodness and mercy shall follow me. David they will say, accompany you. They will 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 accompany you. Now it doesn't matter where you have been posted or where you are working. When God commands the blessing, they will accompany you. You will be blessing the city. And bless in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed. And the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calf of your heads and the lambs of your flocks, they will be blessed. See, when God blesses you, He is interested in your goats. <laughs> You have never seen any a blessed goat, eh? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you see, when God loves you, He loves everything that is yours. Your basket and your needing trust will be blessed. You'll be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that your enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. Be free abisiao na wanam enkwain sonso ebe gane wenim. So when they are running away, they'll forget where they came from. That's why they they will run away in seven ways. Nte dubri a wo gane na wo hu be bikura wo be fa tino wo be pe kwain be enso na wo die gane. Brothers and sisters, adofunum. There is a God that we say. Ye wo nyamia ye sumono. He blesses. O shirao. But remember that He is Lord. Nanso kai se o yowura. And so his commands should not be toyed with. Obedience is certainly better than sacrifice. Loving God before your heart, before your soul, and your neighbor as your friend is more important than sacrifices and offerings. Let's rethink the lordship of christ over our lives shall we just rise in prayer and if you want to give your life to jesus and that you become your lord i want to give you an opportunity tonight if you want to repent of your sins just repeat this prayer after me father god today i repent of my sins and i accept jesus christ as my lord and Savior. Father, help me. If you have sincerely prayed this prayer, Jesus has saved you. And he has become your Lord. Fully obey him. And all the blessings that are in him will accompany him. Everywhere you go. May the Lord bless you tonight. And may the Lord bless all of us. In the name of Jesus.